The Ninth Act of the Wife of Jerusius. Now it chanced that a certain woman, the wife of Jerusius, that was next unto the king, whose name was Magdonia, came to see, and behold the new name and the new God who was being proclaimed, and the new apostle who had come to visit their country, and she was carried by her own servants, and because of the great crowd, and the narrow way they were not able to bring her near unto him. And she sent unto her husband, to send her more to minister to her, and they came and approached her, pressing upon the people and beating them. And the apostle saw it and said to them, Wherefore overthrow ye them that come to hear the word, and are eager for it, and ye desire to be near me, but are far off, as it was said of the multitude, that came unto the Lord, having eyes ye see not, and having ears ye hear not. And he said to the multitudes, He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. And, Come unto me, all ye that labor, and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And looking upon them that carried her, he said unto them, This blessing and this admonition which was promised unto them is for you that are heavily burdened now. Ye are they that carry burdens grievous to be borne, and are borne about by her command. And though ye are men, they lay on you loads, as on brute beasts, for they that have authority over you think, that ye are not men such as themselves, whether bond or free. For neither shall possessions profit the rich, nor poverty save the poor from judgment nor have we received a commandment which we are not able to perform, nor hath he laid on us burdens grievous, to be born which we are not able to carry, nor building which men build, nor to hew stones and prepare houses, as your craftsmen do by their own knowledge. But this commandment have we received of the Lord, that that which pleaseth not us, when it is done by another this, we should not do to any other man. Abstain therefore first from adultery, for this is the beginning of all evils, and next from theft, which enticed Judas Iscariot, and brought him unto hanging, and from covetousness, for as many as yield unto covetousness, see not that which they do, and from vainglory, and from all foul deeds, especially them of the body, whereby cometh eternal condemnation. For this is the chief city of all evils, and likewise it bringeth them that hold their heads, necks, high unto tyranny, and draweth them down unto the deep, and subdueth them under its hands, that they see not what they do, wherefore the things done of them are hidden from them. But do ye become well pleasing unto God in all good things, in meekness and quietness, for these doth God spare, and granteth eternal life and setteth death at naught. And in gentleness which followeth on all good things, and overcometh all enemies and alone receiveth the crown of victory, with gentleness, sir. And stretching out of the hand to the poor, and supplying the want of the needy, and distributing to them that are in necessity, especially them that walk in holiness. For this is chosen before God and leadeth unto eternal life, for this is before God the chief city of all good, for they that strive not in the course, stadium, of Christ shall not obtain holiness. And holiness did appear from God, doing away fornication, overthrowing the enemy, well pleasing unto God, for she is an invincible champion, athlete, having honor from God, glorified of many, she is an ambassador of peace, announcing peace, if any gain her, he abideth without care pleasing the Lord, expecting the time of redemption, for she doeth nothing amiss, but giveth life and rest and joy unto all that gain her. But meekness hath overcome death and brought him under authority, meekness hath enslaved the enemy. Meekness is the good yoke. Meekness feareth not and opposeth not the many. Meekness is peace and joy and exultation of rest. Abide ye therefore in holiness and receive freedom from me, and be near unto meekness for in these three heads is portrayed the Christ whom I proclaim unto you. Holiness is the temple of Christ, and he that dwelleth in her getteth her for inhabitation, because for forty days and forty nights he fasted, tasting nothing. And he that keepeth her shall dwell in her as on a mountain. And meekness is his boast. For he said unto Peter our fellow apostle, Turn back thy sword and put it again into the sheath thereof. For if I had willed so to do, could I not have brought more than twelve legions of angels from my father? And when the apostle had said these things in the hearing of all the multitude, they trod and pressed upon one another. And the wife of Jerusius the king's kinsman eaped out of her chair and cast herself on the earth before the apostle, and caught his feet and besought and said, O disciple of the living God, thou art come into a desert country, for we live in the desert, being like to brute beasts in our conversation, but now shall we be saved by thy hands, I beseech thee, therefore, take thought of me, and pray for me, that the compassion of the God whom thou preachest may come upon me, and I may become his dwelling place and be joined in prayer and hope and faith in him, and I also may receive the seal and become an holy temple, and he may dwell in me. And the apostle said, I do pray and entreat for you all, brethren, that believe on the Lord, and for you, sisters, that hope in Christ, that in all of you the word of God may tabernacle and have his tabernacle therein. For we have no power over them, sir 
because ye are given power over your own souls. And he began to say unto the woman Magdonia, Rise up from the earth and compose thyself, take off thine ornaments, p. be mindful of thyself, sir. For this attire that is put on shall not profit thee nor the beauty of thy body, nor thine apparel, neither yet the fame of thy rank, nor the authority of this world, nor the polluted intercourse with thine husband, shall avail thee, if thou be bereaved of the true fellowship. For the appearance, fantasy, of ornamenting cometh to naught, and the body waxeth old and changeth, and raiment weareth out, and authority and lordship pass away, and the fellowship of procreation also passeth away, and is as it were condemnation. Jesus only abideth ever, and they that hope in him. Thus he spake, and said unto the woman, Depart in peace, and the Lord shall make thee worthy of his own mysteries. But she said, I fear to go away, lest thou forsake me and depart unto another nation. But the apostle said to her, even if I go, I shall not leave thee alone, but Jesus of his compassion will be with thee. And she fell down and did him reverence and departed unto her house. Now Chirisius, the kinsman of Misdias the king, bathed himself and returned and laid him down to dine. And he inquired concerning his wife, where she was, for she had not come out of her own chamber to meet him as she was wont. And her handmaid said to him, She is not well. And he entered quickly into the chamber and found her eating on the bed and veiled. And he unveiled her and kissed her, saying, Wherefore art thou sorrowful today? And she said, I am not well. And he said unto her, Wherefore then didst thou not keep the guise of thy freedom, sir? Pay proper respect to thy position as a free woman, and remain in thy house, but didst go and listen unto vain speeches, and look upon works of sorcery? But rise up and dine with me, for I cannot dine without thee. But she said to him, Today I decline it, for I am greatly afeard. And when Chirisius heard this of Magdonia, he would not go forth to dinner, but bade his servants bring her to dine with him, sir. Bring food to him that he might sup in her presence. When then they brought it in, he desired her to dine with him, but she excused herself, since then she would not, he dined alone, saying unto her, On thine account I refused to dine with Miss Dias the king, and thou, wast thou not willing to dine with me? But she said, It is because I am not well. Chirisius therefore rose up as he was wont and would sleep with her, but she said, Did I not tell thee that for today I refused it? When he heard that he went to another bed and slept, and awaking out of sleep he said, My lady Magdonia, hearken to the dream which I have seen. I saw myself lie at meat near to Miss Dias the king, and a dish of all sorts was set before us, and I saw an eagle come down from heaven and carry off from before me, and the king two partridges, which he set against his heart, and again he came over us, and flew about above us, and the king bade a bow, to be brought to him, and the eagle again caught away from before us a pigeon and a dove, and the king shot an arrow at him, and it passed through him from one side to the other, and hurt him not, and he being unscathed rose up into his own nest. And I awoke, and I am full of fear and sore vexed, because I had tasted of the partridge, and he suffered me, not to put it to my mouth again. And Magdonia said unto him, Thy dream is good, for thou every day eatest partridges, but this eagle had not tasted of a partridge until now. And when it was morning Chirisius went and dressed himself, and shot his right foot with his left shoe. And he stopped, and said to Magdonia, What then is this matter, for look, the dream and this action of mine? But Magdonia said to him, And this also is not evil, but seemeth to me very good, for from an unlucky act there will be a change unto the better. And he washed his hands, and went to salute Miss Dias the king. And likewise Magdonia rose up early, and went to salute Judas Thomas the apostle, and she found him discoursing with the captain and all the multitude, and he was advising them, and speaking of the woman which had received the Lord in her soul, whose wife she was. And the captain said, She is the wife of Chirisius the kinsman of Miss Dias the king. And, her husband is a hard man, and in every thing, that he saith to the king he obeyeth him, and he will not suffer her to continue in this mind which she hath promised, for oftentimes hath he praised her before the king, saying that there is none other like her in love, all things therefore, that thou speakest unto her are strange unto her. And the apostle said, If verily and surely the Lord hath risen upon her soul, and she hath received the seed that was cast on her, she will have no care of this temporal life, nor fear death. Neither will Chirisius be able to harm her at all, for greater is he whom she hath received into her soul, if she have received him indeed. And Magdonia hearing this said unto the apostle, In truth, my lord, I have received the seed of thy words, and I will bear fruit like unto such seed. The apostle saith, Our souls give praise and thanks unto thee, O Lord, for they are thine. Our bodies give thanks unto thee, which thou hast accounted worthy to become the dwelling place of thy heavenly gift. And he said also to them that stood by, Blessed are the holy, whose souls have never condemned them, for they have gained them, 
and are not divided against themselves. Blessed are the spirits of the pure, and they that have received the heavenly crown whole from the world, age, which hath been appointed them. Blessed are the bodies of the holy, for they have been made worthy to become temples of God, that Christ may dwell in them. Blessed are ye, for ye have power to forgive sins. Blessed are ye, if ye lose, not that which is committed unto you, but rejoicing and departing bear it away with you. Blessed are ye the holy, for unto you it is given to ask and receive. Blessed are ye meek, for you hath God counted worthy to become heirs of the heavenly kingdom. Blessed are ye meek, for ye are they that have overcome the enemy. Blessed are ye meek, for ye shall see the face of the Lord. Blessed are ye that hunger for the Lord's sake for for you is rest laid up, and your souls rejoice from henceforth. Blessed are ye that are quiet, for ye have been counted worthy to be set free from sin and from the exchange of clean and unclean beasts. And when the apostle had said these things in the hearing of all the multitude, Magdonia was the more confirmed in the faith and glory and greatness of Christ. But Charisius the kinsman and friend of Misdias the king came to his breakfast, and found not his wife in the house, and he inquired of all that were in his house, Whither is your mistress one? And one of them answered and said, She is gone unto that stranger. And when he heard this of his servant, he was wroth with the other servants, because they had not straightway told him what was done, and he sat down and waited for her. And when it was evening, and she was come into the house he said to her, Where wast thou? And she answered and said, With the physician. And he said, Is that stranger a physician? And she said, Yea, he is a physician of souls, for most physicians do heal bodies that are dissolved, but he souls that are not destroyed. Charisius, hearing this, was very angry in his mind with Magdonia, because of the apostle, but he answered her nothing, for he was afraid, for she was above him both in wealth and birth, but he departed to dinner, and she went into her chamber. And he said to the servants, Call her to dinner. But she would not come. And when he heard that she would not come out of her chamber, he went in and said unto her, Wherefore wilt thou not dine with me, and perchance not sleep with me as the wound is? Yea, concerning this I have the greater suspicion, for I have heard that that sorcerer and deceiver teacheth that a man should not live with his wife, and that which nature requireth and the Godhead hath ordained he overthroweth. When Charisius said these things, Magdonia kept silence. He saith to her again, My lady and consort Magdonia, be not led astray by deceitful and vain words, nor by the works of sorcery which I have heard, that this man performeth in the name of Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, for it was never yet heard in the world, that any raised the dead, and, as I hear, it is reported of this man, that he raiseth dead men. And for that he neither eateth nor drinketh, think not that for righteousness sake he neither eateth nor drinketh, but this he doth, because he possesseth naught, for what should he do which hath, not even his daily bread? And he hath one garment, because he is poor, and as for his not receiving aught of any, he doth so, to be sure, because he knoweth in himself, that he doth not verily heal any man, sir. And when Charisius so said, Magdonia was silent as any stone, but she prayed, asking when it should be day, that she might go to the apostle of Christ. And he withdrew from her, and went to dinner heavy in mind, for he thought to sleep with her according to the wont. And when he was gone out, she bowed her knees and prayed, saying, Lord God and Master, merciful Father, save in her Christ, do thou give me strength, to overcome the shamelessness of Jerusius, and grant me to keep the holiness wherein thou delightest, that I also may by it find eternal life. And when she had so prayed she laid herself on her bed and veiled herself. But Charisius having dined came upon her, and she cried out, saying, Thou hast no more any room by me, for my Lord Jesus is greater than thou, who is with me, and resteth in me. And he laughed and said, Well dost thou mock, saying this of that sorcerer, and well dost thou deride him, who saith, Ye have no life with God, unless ye purify yourselves. And when he had so said he essayed to sleep with her, but she endured it not and cried out bitterly and said, I call upon thee, O Lord Jesus, forsake me not. For with thee have I made my refuge, for when I learned that thou art he that seekest out them that are veiled in ignorance, and savest them that are held in error, and now I entreat thee whose report I have heard and believed, come thou to my help, and save me from the shamelessness of Charisius, that his foulness may not get the upper hand of me. And she smote her hands together, tied his hands, sir, and fled from him naked, and as she went forth she pulled down the curtain of the bedchamber, and wrapped it about her, and went to her nurse, and slept there with her. But Charisius was in heaviness all night, and smote his face with his hands, and he was minded to go that very hour, and tell the king concerning the violence that was done him, but he considered with himself, saying, If the great heaviness which is upon me compelleth me to go now unto the king, who will bring me into him, 
for I know that my abuse hath overthrown me from my high looks and my vainglory and majesty, and hath cast me down into this vileness, and separated my sister Magonia from me. Yea, if the king himself stood before the duels of this hour, I could not have gone out and answered him. But I will wait until dawn, and I know that whatsoever I ask of the king, he granteth it me, and I will tell him of the madness of this stranger, how that it tyrannously casteth down the great and illustrious into the depth. For it is not this that grieveth me, that I am deprived of her companying, but for her am I grieved, because her greatness of soul is humbled, being an honorable lady in whom none of her house ever found fault, condemned, she hath fled away naked, running out of her own bedchamber, and I know not whither she is gone. And it may be that she is gone mad by the means of that sorcerer, and in her madness hath gone forth into the marketplace to seek him, for there is nothing that appealeth unto her lovable except him, and the things that are spoken by him. And so saving he began to lament and say, Woe to me, O my consort, and to thee besides, for I am too quickly bereaved of thee. Woe is me, my most dear one, for thou excellest all my race, neither son nor daughter have I had of thee, that I might find rest in them. Neither hast thou yet dwelt with me a full year, and an evil eye hath caught thee from me. Would that the violence of death had taken thee, and I should yet have reckoned myself among kings and nobles, but that I should suffer this at the hands of a stranger, and be like he is a slave, that hath run away, to mine ill fortune and the sorrow of mine unhappy soul. Let there be no impediment for me until I destroy him, and avenge this knight, and may I not be well pleasing before Misdias the king, if he avenge me, not with the head of this stranger, and I will also tell him, of Cypher the captain who hath been the occasion of this. For by his means did the stranger appear here, and lodgeth at his house, and many there be that go in, and come out whom he teacheth a new doctrine, saying that none can live, if he quit not all his substance, and become a renouncer like himself, and he striveth to make many partakers with him. And as Jerusius thought on these things, the day dawned, and after the night he put on a mean habit, and shod himself, and went downcast, and in heaviness to salute the king. And when the king saw him he said, Wherefore art thou sorrowful, and comest in such garb, and I see, that thy countenance is changed. And Chirisius said unto the king, I have a new thing to tell thee, and a new desolation which Cypher hath brought into India, even a certain Hebrew, a sorcerer, whom he hath sitting in his house, and who departeth not from him, and many are there that go into him, whom also he teacheth of a new God, and layeth on them new laws such as never yet were heard, saving, It is impossible for you to enter into that eternal life which I proclaim unto you, unless ye rid you of your wives, and likewise the wives of their husbands. And it chanced that mine unlucky wife also went to him, and became a hearer of his words, and she believed them, and in the night she forsook me, and ran unto the stranger. But send thou for both Cypher and that sorcerer, that is hid with, in, him, and visited on their head, lest all that are of our nation perish. And when Misdias his friend heard this, he saith to him, Be not grieved nor heavy, for I will send for him and avenge thee, and thou shalt have thy wife again, and the others, that cannot I will avenge. And the king went forth, and sat on the judgment seat, and when he was said he commanded Cypher the captain to be called. They went therefore unto his house, and found him sitting on the right hand of the apostle and Magdonia at his feet, hearkening to him with all the multitude. And they that were sent from the king said unto Cypher, Sittest thou here listening to vain words, and Misdias the king in his wrath, thinketh to destroy thee, because of this sorcerer and deceiver whom thou hast brought into thine house? And Cypher hearing it was cast down, not because of the king's threat against him, but for the apostle, because the king was disposed contrary to him. And he said to the apostle, I am grieved concerning thee, for I told thee at the first, that that woman is the wife of Jerusius the king's friend and kinsman, and he will not suffer her to perform, that she hath promised, and all that he asketh of the king he granteth him. But the apostle said unto Cypher, Fear nothing, but believe in Jesus, that pleadeth for us all, for unto his refuge are we gathered together. And Cypher, hearing that, put his garment about him, and went unto Misdias the king, and the apostle inquired of Magdonia, What was the cause, that thy husband was wroth with thee, and devised this against us? And she said, Because I gave not myself up unto his corruption destruction. For he desired last night to subdue me, and subject me unto that passion which he serveth, and he to whom I have committed my soul delivered me out of his hands, and I fled away from him naked, and slept with my nurse, but that which befell him I know not, wherefore he hath contrived this. The apostle saith, These things will not hurt us, but believe thou on Jesus, and he shall overthrow the wrath of Jerusius, and his madness and his impulse, and he shall be a companion unto thee in the fearful way, and he shall guide thee into his kingdom, and shall bring thee unto eternal life giving thee that confidence which passeth not away nor changeth. Now Cypher stood before the king, 
and he inquired of him, Who is that sorcerer, and whence, and what teacheth he whom thou hast lurking in thine house? And Cypher answered the king, Thou art not ignorant, O king, what trouble and grief I, with my friends, had concerning my wife, whom thou knowest, and many others remember, and concerning my daughter, whom I value more than all my possessions, what a time and trial I suffered, for I became a laughing stock, and a curse in all our country. And I heard the report of this man, and went to him and entreated him, and took him, and brought him hither. And as I came by the way I saw wonderful and amazing things, and here also many did hear the wild ass and concerning that devil whom he drove out, and healed my wife and daughter, and now are they whole. And he asked no reward, but requireth faith and holiness, that men should become partakers with him in that which he doeth, and this he teacheth to worship and fear one God, the ruler of all things, and Jesus Christ his Son, that they may have eternal life. And that which he eateth, is bread and salt, and his drink is water from evening unto evening, and he maketh many prayers, and whatsoever he asketh of his God, he giveth him. And he teacheth, that this God is holy and mighty, and that Christ is living and maketh alive, wherefore also he chargeth them that are there present to come unto him in holiness and purity and love and faith. And when Misdias the king heard these things of Cypher he sent many soldiers unto the house of Cypher the captain, to bring Thomas the apostle and all that were found there. And they that were sent entered in, and found him teaching much people, and Magdonia sat at his feet. And when they beheld the great multitude that were about him, they feared, and departed to their king and said, We durst not say aught unto him, for there was a great multitude about him, and Magdonia sitting at his feet, was listening to the things that were spoken by him. And when Misdias the king and Jerusius heard these things, Jerusius leaped out from before the king, and drew much people with him and said, I will bring him, O king, and Magdonia whose understanding he hath taken away. And he came to the house of Cypher the captain, greatly disturbed, and found him Thomas teaching, but Magdonia he found not, for she had withdrawn herself unto her house, having learnt that it had been told her husband that she was there. And Charisius said unto the apostle, Up, thou wicked one and destroyer and enemy of mine house, for me thy sorcery harmeth not, for I will visit thy sorcery on thine head. And when he so said, the apostle looked upon him, and said unto him, Thy threatenings shall return upon thee, for me thou wilt not harm any wit, for greater than thee, and thy king and all your army is the Lord Jesus Christ in whom I have my trust. And Chalicius took a kerchief, turban, sir, of one of his slaves, and cast it about the neck of the apostle, saying, Hail him and bring him away, let me see, if his God is able to deliver him out of my hands. And they hailed him, and led him away to Misdias the king. And the apostle stood before the king, and the king said to him, Tell me who thou art, and by what power thou doest these things. But the apostle kept silence. And the king commanded his officers, subjects, that he should be scourged with an hundred and twenty-eight, hundred and fifty, sir, blows, and bound, and be cast into the prison. And they bound him, and led him away. And the king and Jerusius considered how they should put him to death, for the multitude worshipped him as God. And they had it in mind to say, The stranger hath reviled the king, and is a deceiver. But the apostle went unto the prison rejoicing and exulting, and said, I praise thee, Jesus. For that thou hast not only made me worthy of faith in thee, but also to endure much for thy sake. I give thee thanks therefore, Lord, that thou hast taken thought for me, and given me patience. I thank thee, Lord, that for thy sake I am called a sorcerer and a wizard. Receive thou me therefore with the blessing of the poor, and of the rest of the weary, and of the blessings of them whom men hate and persecute and revile, and speak evil words of them. For lo, for thy sake I am hated, lo, for thy sake I am cut off from the many, and for thy sake they call me such an one as I am not. And as he prayed, all the prisoners looked on him, and besought him to pray for them, and when he had prayed, and was set down, he began to utter a psalm in this wise. When I was an infant child in the palace of my father and resting in the wealth and luxury of my nurturers, out of the east, our native country, my parents provisioned me and sent me. And of the wealth of those their treasures they put together a load five both great and light, that I might carry it alone. Gold is the load, of them that are above, or of the land of the Elians or Gileans, and silver of the great treasures, or of Gazak the great, and stones, Chalcedonies from the Indians and pearls from the Kasani, Cushion. And they armed me with adamant, and they took off from me. Put on me, the garments set with gems, spangled with gold, which they had made for me, because they loved me, and the robe, that was yellow in hue, made for my stature. And they made a covenant with me, and inscribed it on mine understanding, that I should forget it, and said, If thou go down into Egypt, 
and bring back thence the one pearl which is there girt about by the devouring serpent thou shalt put on the garment set with gems, and that robe whereupon a tree steth, or which is thereon, and become with thy brother, that is next unto us. Of the well remembered, an heir. Herald, in our kingdom. And I came out of the east by a road difficult and fearful, with two guides, and I was untried in traveling by it. And I passed by the borders of the Masani, Mashan, where is the resort of the merchants of the east, and reached the land of the Babylonians. But when I entered into Egypt, the guides left me which had journeyed with me. And I set forth by the quickest way to the serpent, and by his hole I abode watching for him to slumber and sleep, that I might take my pearl from him. And forasmuch as I was alone I made mine aspect strange, and appeared as an alien to my people. And there I saw my kinsman from the east, the freeborn a lad of grace and beauty, a son of princes, or an anointed one. He came unto me, and dwelt with me, and I had him for a companion, and made him my friend and partaker in my journey, or merchandise. And I charged him to beware of the Egyptians, and of partaking of those unclean things, or consorting with those unclean men. And I put on their raiment, lest I should seem strange, as one that had come from without to recover the pearl, and lest the Egyptians should awake the serpent against me. But, I know not by what occasion, they learned that I was not of their country. And with guile they mingled for me a deceit, and I tasted of their food. And I knew no more that I was a king's son, and I became a servant unto their king. And I forget also the pearl for which my fathers had sent me, and by means of the heaviness of their foot, I fell into a deep sleep. But when this befell me, my fathers also were aware of it, and grieved for me, and a proclamation was published in our kingdom, that all should meet at our doors. And then the kings of Parthia and they that bear office and the great ones of the east, made a resolve concerning me, that I should not be left in Egypt, and d the princes wrote unto me signifying thus, and every noble signed his name to it, Sir. From the, thy, father the king of kings, and thy mother that ruleth the east, and thy brother that is second unto us, unto our son that is in Egypt, peace. Rise up and awake out of sleep, and hearken unto the words of the letter and remember that thou art a son of kings, lo, thou hast come under the yoke of bondage. Remember the pearl for the which thou wast sent into Egypt. Remember thy garment spangled with gold, thy name is named in the book of life, and with thy brother whom thou hast received in our kingdom. And the king as ambassador sealed it because of the evil ones, even the children of the Babylonians, and the Tyrannus demons of Labyrinthus, Sarbug, Sir. It flew and lighted down by me, and became all speech. And I at the voice of it and the feeling of it started up out of sleep, and I took it up and kissed it and read it. And it was written concerning that which was recorded in mine heart. And I remembered forthwith that I was a son of kings, and my freedom yearned, sought, after its kind. I remembered also the pearl for the which I was sent down into Egypt and I began, or came, with charms against the terrible serpent, and I overcame him, or put him to sleep, by naming the name of my father upon him, and I caught away the pearl and turned back to bear it unto my fathers. And I stripped off the filthy garment and left it in their land, and directed my way forthwith to the light of my fatherland in the east. And on the way I found my letter that had awakened me, and it, like as it had taken a voice and raised me when I slept, so also guided me with the light that came from it. For at times the royal garment of silk before mine eyes, and with love leading me and drawing me onward, I passed by Labyrinthus, Sarbug, and I left Babylon upon my left hand, and I came unto Mizan, Messene, Mashan, the great, that leath on the shore of the sea, from the heights of Warkan, Hyrcania. Had my parents sent thither by the hand of their treasurers, unto whom they committed it because of their faithfulness. But I remembered not the brightness of it, for I was yet a child and very young when I had left it in the palace at my father, but suddenly, when I saw the garment made like unto me, as it had been in a mirror. And I beheld upon it all myself, or saw it wholly in myself, and I knew and saw myself through it, that we were divided asunder, being of one, and again were one in one shape. Yea, the treasurers also which brought me the garment I beheld, that they were two, yet one shape was upon both, one royal sign was set upon both of them. The money and the wealth had they in their hands, and paid me the due price, and the lovely garment, which was variegated with bright colors with gold and precious stones and pearls of comely hue, they were fastened above, or in the height. And the likeness of the king of kings was all in all of it. Sapphire stones were fitly set in it above, or, like the sapphire stone also were its manifold hues. And again I saw that throughout it motions of knowledge were being sent forth, and it was ready to utter speech. And I heard it speak, I am of him that is more valiant than all men, for whose sake I was reared up with the Father himself. And I also perceived his stature. I perceived in myself that my stature grew in accordance with his working. 
and all its royal motions rested upon me as it grew toward the impulse of it, and with its kingly motions it was spreading itself toward me. And it hastened, reaching out from the hand of unto him that would receive it, and me also did yearning arouse to start forth and meet it and receive it. And I stretched forth and received it, and adorned myself with the beauty of the colors thereof. And in my royal robe excelling in beauty, I arrayed myself wholly. And when I had put it on, I was lifted up unto the place of peace, saltation, and homage and I bowed my head, and worshipped the brightness of the Father which had sent it unto me. For I had performed his commandments, and he likewise that which he had promised, and at the doors of his palace which was from the beginning I mingled among, and he rejoiced over me, and received me with him into his palace, and all his servants do praise him with sweet voices. And he promised me that with him, I shall be sent unto the gates of the king, that with my gifts and my pearl we may appear together before the king. And Chiricius went home glad, thinking that his wife would be with him, and that she had become such as she was before, even before she heard the divine word and believed on Jesus. And he went, and found her with her hair disheveled and her clothes rent, and when he saw it, he said unto her, My lady Magdonia, why doth this cruel disease keep hold on thee, and wherefore hast thou done this? I am thine husband from thy virginity, and both the gods and the law grant me to have rule over thee, what is this great madness of thine, that thou art come a derision in all our nation? But put thou away the care, that cometh of that sorcerer, and I will remove his face from among us, that thou mayest see him no more. But Magdonia when she heard, that gave herself up unto grief, groaning and lamenting, and Chiricius said again, Have I then, so much wronged the gods, that they have afflicted me with such a disease, what is my great offense, that they have cast me into such humiliation? I beseech thee. Magdonia trangle my soul no more with the pitiful sight of thee, and thy mean appearance and afflict not mine heart with care for thee, I am Chiricius thine husband, whom all the nation honoreth and feareth. What must I do? I know not whither to turn. What am I to think, shall I keep silence and endure? Yet who can be patient, when men take his treasure, and who can endure to lose thy sweet ways, and what is there for me? Sir. Thy beauties which are ever before me, the fragrance of thee is in my nostrils, and thy bright face is fixed in mine eyes. They are taking away my soul, and the fair body which I rejoice to see they are destroying, and that sharpest of eyes they are blinding, and cutting off my right hand, my joy is turning to grief and my life to death, and the light of it is being dyed with darkness. Let no man of you my kindred henceforth look on me, from you no hell path come to me, nor will I hereafter worship the gods of the east, that have enwrapped me in such calamities, nor pray to them any more nor sacrifice to them, for I am bereaved of my spouse. And what else should I ask of them, for all my glory is taken away, yet am I a prince and next unto the king in power, but Magdonia hath set me at naught, and taken away all these things. And while Chiricius spake thus with tears, Magdonia sat silent and looking upon the ground, and again he came unto her and said, My lady Magdonia, most desired of me, remember that out of all the women that are in India I chose and took thee as the most beautiful, though I might have joined to myself in marriage many more beautiful, but yet I lie, Magdonia, for by the gods it would not have been possible to find another like thee in the land of India, but woe is me Alway, for thou wilt not even answer me a word, but if thou wilt, revile me, so that I may only be vouchsafed a word from thee. Look at me, for I am more comely than that sorcerer, but thou art my wealth and honor, and all men know that there is none like me, and thou art my race and kindred, and lo, he taketh thee away from me. And when Chiricius had so said, Magdonia saith unto him, He whom I love, is better than thee and thy substance, for thy substance is of earth and returneth unto the earth, but he whom I love, is of heaven, and will take me with him unto heaven. Thy wealth shall pass away, and thy beauty shall vanish, and thy robes, and thy many works, and thou shalt be alone, naked, with thy transgressions. Call not to my remembrance thy deeds, unto me, for I pray the Lord, that I may forget thee, so as to remember no more those former pleasures, and the custom of the body, which shall pass away as a shadow, but Jesus only endureth forever, and the souls which hope in him. Jesus himself shall quit me of the shameful deeds which I did with thee. And when Chiricius heard this, he turned him to sleep, vexed, dissolved, in soul, saying to her, Consider it by thyself all this night, and if thou wilt, be with me such as thou wast before, and not see that sorcerer, I will do all according to thy mind, and if thou wilt remove thine affection from him, I will take him out of the prison, and let him go, and remove into another country, and I will not vex thee, for I know that thou makest much of the stranger. And not with thee first did this matter come about, for many other women also hath he deceived with thee, and they have awaked sober and returned to themselves, do not thou then make naught of my words, and cause me to be a reproach among the Indians. 
and Charisius having thus spoken went to sleep, but she took ten denarii and went secretly to give them to the gallers that she might enter into the apostle. But on the way Judas Thomas came and met her, and she saw him and was afraid, for she thought that he was one of the rulers, for a great light went before him. And she said to herself as she fled, Have lost thee, O my unhappy soul, for thou wilt not again see Judas the apostle of the living, and not yet hast thou received the holy seal. And she fled and ran into a narrow place and there hid herself, saying, I would rather choose to be killed, taken, by the poorer, whom it is possible to persuade, than to fall into the hand of this mighty ruler, who will despise gifts.